Chris, I know Justin's got one of these Hell's Bay marathons on order, but what, what was the genesis behind this particular boat? Makes it a little bit different than the Hell's Bay Marquesa. Well, you know, the Marquesa and the, and the professional each fit their own kind of category. Um, but there were some things that the Marquesa could do better um, if it wasn't the same boat. Right. Okay. So we got with David Mangum and uh, Brent Martina at Apalachicola, who are really just world-class tarpon fishermen, and said, what? And they, and they both were fishing the Marquesa and said, what would you do to make this better uh, for tarpon fishing? So we worked with them for about a year, year and a half on coming up with this boat. This boat is not as wide. It's just as long as the Marquesa. Uh, the bow sits a little prouder. Now that's important when you're sitting out there on some of those bars and you're waiting for the you're come by and you got some yeah. and you're on anchor and you got and you got some waves. The Marquesa will do that fine, but if you get you know there's a certain point where you'll start yeah. taking a little little yeah. wave over the front. This does it a lot less. Um, also for the guys in the Keys that are tarpon tournament fishermen, um, this boat will go fast. Yeah, we put a 115 on it. We're mostly pairing it with the 115s from Mercury, the Pro XS, or the Mercury or the or the Yamaha Show. So, um, what kind of numbers are you looking at it? For uh, depending open? on how you load the boat, uh, but with a trolling motor. I would say tournament loaded, you're going to get in the upper 50s and possibly 60, depending oh, on wow. fuel load and, and client load. Does it have more dead rise than the, uh, than the Marquesa? No, it's about the same dead rise. But because of the beam is narrower, right. it performs different. Yeah, and actually, um, it has a lot of the similar properties also to the Biscayne. So there's a lot of, there's a little bit of Biscayne in here, there's a little bit of Marquesa in here, and then there's a little bit of uh, Appalachia tarpon fishing guys <laughs> that wanted to have also done. Um, and now it's not just a tarpon boat, you know, when that happens. So um, it, it runs through um, chop really well. That's what, we, that's what we've been hearing. Justin and I were talking about that today, that this, this boat already has the reputation as the finest riding skiff on the water today. Well, it does that and it runs through a chop really comfortably fast. You know, where sometimes you can still run through a chop and if you slow it down, you know, even the professional, you know, at around 27 miles an hour is, is a fine boat. Uh, but you can take this one at almost full speed through a really nice chop and you don't even hardly know that. Now, the Biscayne, you can't get a 115 on it, you know, That's 70 right. horsepower, maybe a 90 is about as much as you can get on a Biscayne. Uh, so it doesn't get those top speeds like this boat can get with a 115 on it. So, you know, there's a little, there's a little bit of space for everybody. Um, so all of those are B to bottom boats or great boats. Fuel cell, what size fuel cell? Uh, you're right at 28 gallons. 28 gallons, just like Marquesa. I'll tell you what, it's an impressive boat. I mean, the length is what, 178? 17, 8 inches or? Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's got the same length as the professional. It's kind of, you've almost melded every one of our star boats and made this. And when you do that, when you meld a bunch of weird, a bunch of stuff together, you typically end up with something worse and we didn't. We really kind of, in yeah. a way, took kind of the best of everything and tried to make it fit in the boat. So for example, we got a little longer cockpit so we can put a little bigger consoles in it, you know, so since we did the professional originally and where the bulkheads and all that stuff lays out, technically um, having, you know, a bigger, uh, bigger console that can handle a GPS being recessed doesn't, it, it'll fit, but it's a little tight. This is a lot mm -hmm. more comfortable. So we've got uh, in the back, we don't ha have an, we don't have an open bilge. It's closed. So everything in the back, if you're taking waves over the back while you're anchored up, then it'll wash across the back, so it's uh, you it know. It was it was built for ocean fishing. It was it was yes. built it was built to be a tarpon boat. But you can do everything else too. Everything else in it. it's got a really nice draft. You even want to get better draft. This boat runs really well with a ninety, which get a little weight out of the back. It'll 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 draft you know a so about another two inches less by that. So if you're not really wanting to go fast, uh, quite frankly, uh, I don't want to go that fast. Things happen. <laughs> you know, when you're, you're running across a flat and, and, and it's, nothing's marked and things change and, you know, it, you, things happen fast and you hit things fast, nothing good happens, but, you know. Well, Captain Justin's going to get one of these boats and I'm going to probably go for a trip with him once he gets one. And mm -hmm. it may be something that I want to put my own personal Navy one day. Because I think it, he'd like it. It is one of those boats that 
the mystique of it now has kind of permeated through the guide community and everyone knows that this is a badass boat that everyone wants now. Yeah. So. It'll, it'll, run, it'll run like a scalded cat. I mean, it really will. Um, and it, it will perform well and you'll be comfortable in it running like a scalded cat. So uh, it, it's good for a lot of things. Im impressive lines, beautiful boat. You've done a great job. You really have done a great job.